I mean, I, I totally uh, take uh, your point on board, and I, I think that it's a very good one. Um, the, the, the big strength, of course, of the Yes campaign is that people are very motivated to go and do things. Um, we're, you know, there's only one newspaper that's pro-independence. Um, we've got to overcome uh, that there is an editorial bias in newspapers. Uh, I'm not going to go as far as saying in, in, on, on television, but certainly, you know, the newspapers have pretty much stated their position uh, and the editorial line follows that. So, you know, we've got to work around that. Um, that's the only thing you can do. Um, you, can, you can protest about it as much as you like, but it's not going to change because a lot of the newspapers are owned uh, by people with vested interests, etc. So, you know, we've got to work around it. And the way I, that we do that is this is a person-to-person -person campaign. It's about conversations uh, between people. Um, and, and I think that's something we find going for independence, that actually it's other people from people's peer groups uh, talking to other people that will convince people of independence. Uh, and it's also this idea that actually, for a lot of people, they haven't spoken about politics before. Um, you know, for the last 30 years, politics, people in politics have moved away uh, from politics as politics has moved away from people, uh, and people have been very disengaged. But now it seems, you know, people are having conversations about the independence referendum. You know, it's acceptable. And I, I think the more normal the, the concept of independence is to people, the more people are talking about it, actually, the more acceptable and the more um, desirable it actually is. But I mean, I think that the big thing that we have to do in the Yes campaign is to make sure that we're speaking to as many people as we can. We have to go into areas where there is a lot of voter apathy, um, especially in areas where um, there is disenfranchisement. Uh, I'm very disappointed to see that the Electoral Commission uh, the government haven't run schemes uh, to ensure that people are on electoral registers. Uh, I mean, that, that for me is very, very disappointing. There are a lot of people that aren't on electoral registers through debt. Um, because they don't want to be contacted by debt collection agencies. There are women that are not on there because they're affected by domestic violence. We should have had a programme to ensure that more people were uh, felt confident that their details would be safe when they were on the electoral register. And I think that's a big disappointment. But, you know, there is still time to get into communities, to reassure people, um, to ensure that people that ha have debt um, issues uh, aren't disenfranchised and they get on the register and make sure that they can vote because actually this vote potentially affects them the most. Um, and, and so that's that's something we can do. Radical Indy uh, in Glasgow, I now live in Glasgow, I work in Glasgow. Um, Radical Indy have been really good at doing that, um, working with local Yes campaigns as well. But going into areas where you know people traditionally there is a really low turnout, uh, and the reasons are some of these reasons. You know, people aren't not just interested in politics because they're not interested in politics. They can't be because they're worried about their individual circumstances. And when you knock on somebody's door and they've got debt issues. Um, they don't always answer the door. I call people lurkers, blatant or surreptitious. There are people that you walk past the window and they'll be watching their telly and they're not interested. Right? And you knock the door, they look at you, you look at them and you go, all right, I'm on to plums. Right, next door. Whereas there are people that tiptoe up to their doors and they, they look out and they see somebody that they don't know and then they tiptoe back, and TVs go off when doors ring, and that's because people are scared. And that's disappointing that we haven't overcome that. But, you know, we have to try as much as we can, and we have to chap every single door. We've got eight weeks, nine weeks to do this. Uh, you know, we're not going to be able to chap every single door, but we have to endeavour to, um, because people are making the biggest decision they'll probably make in their political lives. Uh, we want as many people in Scotland, as high a turnout as possible, to do that and to ensure that as many people are represented as possible. So it's our responsibility to do this. But you know, this, this meeting is a small meeting, but it's people that might not have come to a political meeting before that are here. Uh, I've been to some where there's 400, 500 people there. Admittedly, about two thirds are yes people, but it, it's not just the fact that they're yes. A lot of people there have moved to yes in the last couple of years, but they want to know information about how they talk to their friends and they still have questions about independence. And so actually they all have value because people are taking that information and then going away and talking to people and their families. And I think that that's how you know, the, the referendum can be won. It isn't all bad news. The uh, voter registrations are at uh, record levels. I, I think uh, uh, something uh, around uh, 4.1 million. 
so, I mean, that is good news. People are registering to vote. The problems that Natalie refers to still exist, but there is some good news there. Uh, as the, the, the apathy uh, thing, I don't think that that is actually uh, the, the main problem, because I have noticed a, a significant change. Uh, it seemed to happen very suddenly around the beginning of this year, uh, when it, all of a sudden it became 2014. It became the year of the referendum, and it's not two years hence, it's not a, next year, it's this year. And there seemed to be uh, a, a very rapid change in people's attitudes. All of a sudden it went from uh, when, if you, would, if, you, if you were standing in the pub and you mentioned uh, the referendum, uh, folk were pretty much like, oh, oh we used to really go, I didn't want to be bothered with that. Uh, it went from that, it seemed to be almost overnight, the situation where if the subject came up, everybody wanted to join in. People were leaving their tables to come and join in a conversation at the bar. So it's not the apathy that I'm uh, concerned about. I, I don't think there is apathy uh, as a real huge problem, such as there has been in politics for 30 years and more. Uh, I, I think we've managed to overcome that. What we have not managed to overcome, as well as we should, as well as we need to, is uh, disinformation. The, uh, the, the distortions and the deceits and the downright lies that are being peddled by the UK government, the British parties, Better Together and their allies, UK, the Orange Order, all the rest of them, and of course the British media. That is definitely a problem. Uh, it's disinformation rather than uh, apathy. I very early on decided that uh, the only way that we were going to combat that was by using the, uh, the, the internet, by using the web. That uh, the only way we could uh, counterbalance uh, the, the weight of the British media, which was never, I, I was quite surprised even when the Sunday Herald came in, quite honestly. Uh, uh, the only way we're going to counterbalance that is uh, uh, by using the online media. And uh, that has proven to be correct, and I think that is still uh, the way we have to go. We have to push more and more people towards looking for information on the net. Uh, that's the only way they're going to get the proper information. It's the only way we'll combat the disinformation. Um, just, just quickly on the point of apathy, I was reading The Sun, I work the other day, but I wouldn't buy from myself, I was reading The Sun, and um, it said 62%. Six, <laughs> 62% of the people are apparently apathetic towards um, the referendum in September. And the song was taking the editorial line off of it's a lack of passion on both sides. And it's definitely not. I would go to meetings, I've been in quite a lot of meetings similar to this all around the country, and there's passion on both sides. I don't think anyone can deny that. Um, but rather, I'd say the problem to get people engaged is newspapers like The Sun in the first place because they paint this referendum the choice between Alex Salmond and the Labour government in 2015, and obviously that is a completely false choice. That voting for independence is not a vote for Alex Hammond. I think we need to get that clear to people because a lot of people hate Alex Hammond. I personally don't, but a lot of people do. And um, it's like it's like not buying a house because you don't like the wallpaper in the house. You can replace the wallpaper after you buy it. It's stupid not to vote for independence because of Alex Hammond, but people seem to be reluctant to buy into this yes message because it's an like, it's like SNP programme, it's a vote for the SNP, especially the Labour, Labour voters who seem to be quite sort of, dogmatic in their uh, tribal, almost tribal support for uh, the Labour Party. Um, but it's important for groups like Radical Independence and the SSP and Labour for Independence especially perhaps um, to get out into communities where maybe this apathy is the greatest and really convince people it's not just about the SS, SNP, it's about change and it's about us taking control of our country and it's about Scotland. So that's how we Just to follow up on that point, we have been doing it. I mean, I live, I live in Johnson, which is a small town outside.
outside Paisley. It's a very Labour town. Uh, obviously, from where I've been brought up, it was dropped into you from a young age that that's what you vote for. Although your grand would always tell you, I'm not telling you who I vote for, but you'll vote Labour. <laughs> uh, so, we did do it last week, not last week, week before Saturday, the no bus was due to come. And uh, I made sure overnight we heard about it because I don't get the emails anymore to tell me what the Labour Party are doing. Uh, so overnight we drummed up some people to have a yes stall in the square where the no bus was going to come. And it was just to make sure that people that would know the no bus were coming were getting both sides of the information. Not for any other reason, although it's been made out to be that we were there mop handed, but we weren't. Just more of us turned up than what came to their bus. <laughs> and, uh, we had probably about 30 activists, I would say, kicking about the square with balloons and I brought the kids, we made sure it was a nice, relaxed atmosphere. The no bus came in, the first thing you came, we did was walk up to one of our guys, Alex, and say, so what's the ELP are you And who is in charge of that? Who's the chair of that? As if we're actually not Labour members in the first place. So we get a lot of it from our own party, is what we do when we're out in the streets, because I get called an Alex Salmon lover. You can't be a member of the Labour Party if you love Alex Salmon. I don't love Alex Salmon. I, I totally... I, I'm so amazed at the man's courage of doing what he needed to do. And I'm not going to deny that everybody that's a Labour voter hasn't voted tactically, because some of us have. And I will admit that, because you know who's going to get you what you want. And it was always going to be he was the bravest man to do the job. But I'm not saying that I really want Alex Salmon to run my country after it's independent, because you don't know who's in the wings. You don't know the silent participants that are... Well, that is very true. That's one of my big reasons for the voting yes. But you don't know. There's a whole stack of people you don't see activists in the wings that have so much potential that are held back because of that potential. People like certain people in my constituency don't want the ones with potential to come forward because it then gets their job under threat. You have a whole hive of people that you don't know about. Once this becomes an independent country, those people have the choice of stepping up to the mark and saying, I want involved, I've got this to put forward, I've got this skill that I want to put in, and that's where we're going to get it from, is these people that are hiding in the background, these activists that have just dished out leaflets, that's all they've been given to do their whole political lives, is to hand out a flag and a leaflet. Their job now is to say, hold on, I'm better than that, and I want the chance to do that. So that's where you're trying to get these people from, and that's what I hope it brings. Being in a Labour town, you do get the attitude, but I'm seeing it starting to change. They are taking the leaflets. They're going, oh right, but you're Labour. Yes, I'm Labour. No mention of Alex Salmon for about nearly six months now. So they are starting to come round and realise, hold on, I need to read this now, because I need to make a choice quickly. So it, I'm full of quite a positive energy just now with what I've been doing out in the streets and I'm the one that sees the majority of the Labour people because we try to go in to where the Labour seats are and the Labour people are to try and get them to engage and understand that just because the Labour Party says you're voting no doesn't mean to say that's what you have to vote because that's not the way it is now. When your granny told you to vote <laughs> Labour, you don't have to do that either. That's what a democracy is about. So it's getting out and telling people Take this information, please don't believe just all the lies. Read everything you can, not just our leaflet, everything, and then make an informed choice. Well, if you ask Mel, you'll be at another band. Why did he keep coming up here and telling us to vote no? He's coming up here and telling you to vote no because his friend's jobs are under threat. Yeah. If, if we vote yes in an independent country, you think. Dolly's Alexander, Joanne Lamont, their jobs are in Westminster. Going They're going. Right. Obviously they're not going overnight because you've got the transition period, but they are going. They are more interested in the fact that Scotland has the majority of the Labour vote, which adds to their Labour vote down south to give them Westminster. That's all they care about is getting a home to Westminster. Now you know that Scotland is a predominantly Labour voting country until recently, when the SNP have obviously done what we, what we need them to do, and they have done a good job. They have done an extremely good job, I'm not denying that fact. So. If the, if the land didn't come up and fight, and the Labour voters in Scotland get taken away from them, they then don't have that majority Labour vote sitting in the pot, ready for the Westminster election to add to the towns up north. Mm -hmm. So that's where his problem is. He believe, gets rid of us, or that's basically what he's doing, because I think they're basically giving it to us sometimes. 
but he loses us, he loses that stack of votes that they've got in Port Betty for Westminster. So they have to start battling, and that's why they're becoming righter and more right and more right, because the votes are in London. After Scotland, the votes are in London. So he has to adapt the party to become what London needs. And that's why we are becoming disenfranchised the Labour Party, because they're not what we need anymore. So it's a difficult situation for them, and I understand that. But I don't think they're doing what is right for us as a Scottish Labour Party.